Hey guys, what up? It's your boy Psycho Bliak back at it again with another adorable video for Spooky Month. Now, why is today's video an adorable video, you might ask? Well, because today we're going to be talking about the 2019 independent film Antrim, the deadliest movie ever made. Now, I'm sure you all are scratching your heads wondering how on earth the self proclaimed deadliest movie ever made could possibly be adorable. Well, that's what we're here to talk about. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Okay, so I first found out about this movie through this TikTok my sister sent me. Since she's always sending me scary TikToks so I can be the one to look up stuff she's too scared to look up. In this case, she sent me a TikTok of a girl watching the movie Antrim and crying and shaking in pure fear. So naturally I think, oh shit, this movie must be pretty hardcore, huh? And I immediately looked for it and found the whole thing uploaded on YouTube. Here is just a little reenactment of my experience watching Antrim. Oh, hey, Gladdy, what's up? Huh, that looks really spooky. I'll look into it. Thanks, Chloe. Hmm, seems spooky enough. Okay, well, it wasn't exactly the scariest movie I've ever seen. I don't know where they got the deadliest movie ever from. <laughs> so yeah, as you can tell, I wasn't very impressed, especially for how much this chick was making a big deal out of it. To sum up the movie, it starts off with an introduction into the deadliest film ever made aspect with a documentary-like series of interviews with film festival directors as they talk about the incident with a cinema in Budapest which was screening Antrim in the 1970s, burning down and killing everyone inside. The interviews also reveal the unnatural deaths of other peoples who vaguely interacted with the film's distribution, or rather lack of, in film festivals. This subsequently is what gives the movie the title of the deadliest film ever made. Then they explain that the movie itself has a lot of hidden messages in it, including remnants of a snuff film. After all this, they show the actual film within a film itself, the titular Antrim which starts with a family as they are putting down their dog. The little boy, Nathan, believes that his dog has gone to hell and is suffering nightmares from it. So his oldest sister, Orly, takes him to the woods where, quote unquote, the devil landed when he was cast out of heaven, in an attempt to dig a hole to hell to try and redeem the soul of their dog. In the process of digging the hole to hell, the world around them begins to decay as all hell breaks loose in more ways than one. All right, so first and foremost, I didn't find this movie scary. I found it unnerving, but that's the largest extent of fear I felt. One of the biggest reasons for this is that, well, I haven't been scared of satanic imagery since like middle school, and that kind of imagery is the largest aspect of the horror in the film. That being said, I did like this movie, quite a bit in fact, but not for the reasons I'm sure the filmmakers intended. I like this movie, one, because of some of the clever and interesting creative decisions made, and two, because I thought the story alone with the siblings was, simply put, adorable. Alright, so let's actually jump into that first point. There were a lot of creative decisions that the filmmakers made that genuinely made me think, oh wow, while watching the movie. The first one being obviously with the whole movie within a movie aspect. The documentary style introduction with the film festival organizers and the film historians established that the deadly events described really did occur and that Antrim is to blame, which really sets the tone for Antrim itself as a forbidden piece of knowledge forgotten by time, which in itself very much gets the viewer excited for what fresh hell is about to come that could have possibly caused all this commotion. This documentary aspect makes Antrim stand out from other found footage horror in that it establishes that there are two different diegesis. Uh, which is basically film jargon for uh, the film's reality. There is a quote-unquote our die Jesus, where the interviews take place as well as the burning of the theater, and then there is Antrim's diegesis, which is just the movie. Instead of presenting the film like a traditional found footage film, where both introductions take place in the same diegesis, which the film tries to convince us is our diegesis, like in the case of the Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity. Basically, this establishment of Antrim as just a movie allows for a much more believable feel than other found footage films. Because the found footage in Antrim is Antrim. It's just a movie. And it's not where the horror comes from. 
The horror comes from the prospect of watching a movie in which hundreds of people have died from watching, ultimately making you weary and borderline paranoid while watching the movie at the prospect of something bad happening to you after viewing, especially when all hell begins to slip throughout the plot. That was the biggest one. And every creative decision after that may seem very small, at least in comparison, but they still add up very nicely. Next is the aspect of language in Antrim, starting with the beginning credits. As you may have noticed, they're in Russian, which isn't out of the question for the film, as it did premiere at a film festival in Budapest, so naturally we as the audience expect to have to read subtitles, since the characters are surely going to be speaking Russian. However, such is not the case, as the kids seem to speak perfect English which causes questions to arise immediately as to why these children speak English in this Russian film. And it gets even more interesting when you find out they're the only ones who speak English. The man they meet who is about to commit suicide in the forest speaks Japanese. The two men who capture the kids to put them in the Satan oven speak Russian. And almost all the subliminal messaging is in Latin. And keep in mind there are no subtitles in the movie whatsoever. I absolutely adore this decision in regards to the languages in the film because it works to create a very unnerving feeling throughout the movie, right from the beginning as we know absolutely nothing about the people behind this movie, seeing as how no description was given of the filmmakers in the documentary opening before Antrim began. We looked at the credits at the beginning for, at the very least, the name of the director. But no, all we get is Russian characters completely illegible to most people. As if this movie was made by no one. In terms of the spoken aspect of the language barrier, this works to further alienate not only us but the children from the reality of this hellscape forest. We do not understand the Japanese man when he speaks. We know not of what spurred his suicide attempt, nor what he plans to do next after being interrupted by the kids. His words are not meant to be understood. We are meant to be left wondering if the hellscape forest played a role in his choice, and if a fate like that could be in the future for one of our protagonists. However, this effect shines the brightest when the two Russian men capture the kids and attempt to shove them in the Satan oven. We don't know why they're doing this. Unless an audience member understands Russian, we can't possibly know what they're saying. We can only assume they're doing this as a sacrifice to their twisted deity. With their motives unknown, these two men become beyond horrifying, as we realize they cannot be reasoned with to perhaps spare the lives of these kids. In a sense, perhaps, this also works as a means to reflect the mind of a child, one who does not truly understand things like suicide or human sacrifices. To them, it's nothing but an unknown tongue, but they soon understand that these people are out to hurt them. However, neither they nor us will ever truly understand why. In terms of the Latin subliminal messages that appear sporadically throughout the film, it works pretty much the same way as the Russian and Japanese. We don't know what it's saying, so we can only really guess and more often than not, we imagine the worst. Perhaps the Latin phrases are a curse being put upon us, damning us to meet an awful end. In actuality, I looked up some of the Latin phrases and most of them were nonsense or just cryptic strings of words with no actual meaning. Uh, but hey, even if they don't really mean anything, their function still is successful. Moving on to another aspect I liked of Antrim, the spliced snuff film remnants that are littered throughout the film. While the footage itself is your standard dark web art project fair with a semi-nude bloodied man and woman cowering at what looks to be a restroom, the idea to splice it with the footage is honestly pretty creative in terms of a new type of jump scare. In fact, this is a pretty standard practice in horror games. Flash scary footage or frames to unnerve the player without actually having to jump scare them with a loud noise? Maybe I haven't watched enough horror movies, but I generally cannot think of another horror movie that has done something like this. They also flash sketched pentagrams on individual frames, which has more or less the same effect as the snuff footage. Did I find any of it particularly scary? Uh, no, but I did find it an interesting choice, which I ultimately quite liked. Now that I've covered what I think worked for the creep factor of Antrim, I have to confess a big part of the reason why I don't think this movie scared me, aside from my personal desensitization of satanic imagery was because the story itself of the sister who has gone through so much to fabricate a story of rescuing their dog from hell so she can spare her brother the, his horrible nightmares is something so very wholesome and innocent, even though that may sound somewhat ironic. Yes, by the end of it, these two fall prey to the evils of the forest as we are left hanging on to whether or not Orly ends up shooting Nathan or not, but before that we have some great moments with these two. 
Not once do these two fight, and Orly's love for her brother is practically palpable, as we see the length she goes to try and make this facade seem real to Nathan. She is very much like a tender and loving mother figure who is just trying to protect her brother from the evils of the world, even if she has to lie to do so, and unfortunately ends up pushing him right into the thick of said evil. I suppose in that sense, it's more tragic than scary. But in the end, these kids were too wholesome for me to ever be particularly terrified. Again, if anything, I was saddened, hoping that the horrible fate foreshadowed for these two would not come to fruition, but ultimately knowing that it was. In the end, Antrim is a very interesting movie, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's looking to see a horror movie that's very unique and charming. That's all I have for today's video. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, subscribe to me on DLive, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye!